Good morning, everyone. This is Rush Runner. I'm back at with you in another unboxing video. And today on the docket we have ba -da -ba -da! Fallout. Crawl out through the Fallout, baby. I don't know that song too well. Uh, how about this? Uh, heartache by the number, trouble by the storm. Every day, mommy is. Uh, heartache, mo. Yeah. What is the flavor of Fallout today? Well, it is, uh, a flavor that I don't even indulge in. It's Magic the Gathering. War never changes. Battle your fellow Wastelanders for style as the Fallout series joins with Magic's most popular multiplayer format. Enlist the brilliance of Dr. Madison Lee to build a robot army generating energy counters with every artifact you cast Charge up your mechanical legion, led by Liberty Prime, and stomp out the opposition. Dr. Branson Lee. Dr. Branson Lee is one of the brilliant scientific minds of her time, spearheading advanced research in the Capital Wasteland and the Commonwealth, while her employers and actions are occasionally questionable. She always fights for the future of Earth. So, there are four decks. Uh, legion Raiders, that's called Hail Caesar or something like that. Science, which is Enclave, Brotherhood of Steel, and the Institute. There's a Wastelanders one with uh, dog meat. And uh, I forget what the fourth one is. And I went with this one. Why? Because, one, Liberty Prime. Two, I believe this is the one that has my boy, John Henry Eden, President of America. President of your heart. As well as, uh, Mr. House. If they aren't in here, I'm going to be really bummed out. It may also... Oh, the final one is Mutants. Uh, that one, I think, has the Master, who is uh, voiced by Jim Cummings in Fallout 1 and is a really cool character. He's like this... He's like a blob monster, like something out of Society or uh, Slither that's, like, attached itself to a computer. So, like, he talks in, like, three different voices. A normal voice... Look, four different voices. Normal voice, computer voice, angry voice, and a female voice. And all the voices except the female voice are Jim Cummings. Which just proves how great an actor he is. Anyway, let's see what's in here. Come on. What? Oh. Get my son of a... Mother... Huh. Oh, that's cool. It's got a deck holder. That's nice. That's really handy. It's going to be good for putting this stuff in. Okay. Ah! What is this? There's something else in here. Whoa. I've never, I've never done a Magic the Gathering opening before, so this is all really cool and weird to me. So there are these weird, like, markers here. Don't know what they're for. Oh, there's more markers on either side. Of okay, I'm going to have to investigate this further. It's here. I really like this, I really like this, like, big image of Lee, though. I might have to take that out later. Have that as a thing. Okay, but this is a weird counter. It goes up to... Wow, it goes up a long way. Okay, so it goes up to 40, and it starts at 21, which means this one... Okay, this one starts at 20, so... It's a counter that is double-sided to go all the way to... Okay, okay, that's cool. And then... Magic Gathering here. What's this thing down here? Fell out. Ah! Come back here, you little man. Success! I believe this is instructions. Either that or a poster. Ooh, if it's a poster, I'm gonna be so happy. Oh! Oh! It's a poster! 
Yes! Oh, never mind. It's kind of a poster. That's neat. It's an instructional manual. It's got, like, some nice little vibes to it. But, okay. Here's the main deck, and then it comes with a little pack of cards, too. Okay. So, let's see who the cards are. Now, obviously, it's got Madison Lee, who is a decent character in Fallout. Both decent in morality and decent as, like, sh I, I like her fine. Then it's got Liberty Prime, who... <laughs> you can see him behind my Corvo mask back there. He's basically like this, like, Wonder Waffle that... Or Wonder Waffin that... <laughs> Was just like Robco extorting money from the U.S. to build them a big war machine that would never actually work. And then the Brotherhood of Steel managed to get them up and running to help fight the Enclave. So it's there's a bit of irony to it that like this tool of fascist capitalist America is actually helping defeat the fascists. Anyway, so we have Dr. Madison Lee. Legendary creature, human scientist. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you get an energy counter. Pay, energy counter, target creature, gets one, zero, gets plus one, plus zero, gains trample, haste until the end of the turn. Pay three, draw a card, pay five, return, ar target artifact card from graveyard to the battlefield, tapped. And it's got Liberty Prime recharged. Vigilance, trample, hey, oh hey, oh, it, let's see, what does she have? Oh, she doesn't have flavor text, no! Legendary artifact, creature, robot, vigilante, temple, haste. Whenever Liberty Prime recharge attacks or blocks, sacrifice it unless you pay two energy. No, two energy counters. Sacrifice an artifact, you get two energy counters and draw a card. Democracy is non-negotiable. He spouts a ton of, like, really fun quotes like that. Paladin Dance! Oh, it's my boy! Uh, my, my, my little Buzz Lightyear. Uh, so the joke with that, okay, in Fallout 4, Paladin Dance is, like, this really... You know, he truly believes in the message of the Brotherhood, which is to protect humanity from itself, to <coughs> hoard technology and study it so that we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. And he actually kind of spells out the, the whole thesis of Fallout in your first quest with him, where he's like, all these... All these corporations were just out to make a profit, and they're why America burned. And it was like... Dude, comrade dance. <laughs> anyway, Paladin Dance, Steel Maverick. Also, it turns out he's actually a synth, a Gen 3 synth. The Gen 3 synths are actually cybernetically enhanced clones of your son. So don't have sex with Paladin Dance because he's technically your grandson. Anyway, Vigilance, like legendary artifact creature, synth knight. Hey, it's. Wow, spoilers right on the card. Vigilance, lifelink, exile, paladin, dance, steel, maverick, each creature you control that's a artifact or a human gains indestructible until end of turn. I need to be the example, not the exception. Dance, uh, hey, dance, of course, being a tr true blue brotherhood person. When he finds out he's a synth, it destroys him, mentally. Nerd Rage, the perk! So Nerd Rage in the games is a perk you get from having high intelligence. And it's there to uh, counteract not having a lot of strength or endurance. Basically, if you go below a certain eight, uh, health level, you, you gain a ton of endurance and strength. As seen here. Oh, here, I should show you. There's Lee. There's Prime. There's Dance. Anyway. Enchant Creature. When Nerd Rage enters the battlefield, draw two cards. Nerd Creature says, you have no maximum hand size. Okay, whatever. Hey. Robo Brain War Mind. Artifact Creature Robot. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah. We're starting to get into like the the stuff I don't care about. Bottle Cap Blast. I believe this is a bottle cap mine going off. Yeah. <gasps> Elder Lions! Elder Owen Lions. Legendary creature, human knight. Artifact you control, you have 
Ward 1. Whenever an artifact you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, counter it unless that player pays one, I'm guessing, token? When Elderline Lawns enters battlefield or dies, return target artifact from card to... Man, this art is so good. Behemoth of Vault Zero. This appears to be a machine of some kind. Artifact creature robot. That's cool. I I never played the original Fallout, so I don't know what Fallout what Vault Zero is. Then there's the camp, which is something from the which is something from the uh, Fallout seventy six. Basically, it lets you build your camp in the it, it lets you build your base in the game. Endurance bobblehead. Um, the bobbleheads are little artifacts you can find in the wasteland of the games, where it'll let you have, where it'll increase your, increase your various skills and stuff. This one obviously increases endurance. I'm only going to be focusing on stuff that like, really focusing on stuff that's either legendary or maybe has some flavor text to it. Expert level safe. That's cute. The intelligence bobblehead. Bobbleheads were once an exclusive perk for Vault Tech executives and residential vault dwellers. Oh, does the does the endurance vault? No, it does not. So hey, uh, that almost looks like it could be from in in Fallout Four, in Engine. Nuka Cola vending machine. That's sweet. Literally. Crush contraband. I'm just, so just a, a again the Brotherhood of Steel they they take technology and they destroy it. Dispatch, wow, what a what an image, eye lasering a vertibird. Vertibirds are like helicopters and Fallout. Swords to plowshares. At Vault Tech Agricultural Research Center, Mister Handy robots were repurposed for farming and turning intruders into fertilizer. I'm not sure if this is from the if this is from the uh, from Fallout 76, but there is a Mr. Handy run greenhouse called Grey Garden in Fallout 4. Glimmer of Genius. This appears. Doctor Madison Lee's genius was an asset for both Project Purity and later the Institute. Thirst for knowledge. A blend of 17 fruit flavors, cola, and a weaponized isotope byproduct that barely passed safety approval. We have a, I believe that's a super mutant drinking Nuka Cola Quantum. Really fun. I actually pre ordered Nuka Cola Victory. Look forward to that. Let's try. Whirler Rogue Institute Scientist. Loyal Apprentice. Does Ramos know you're walking around without a guard? This appears to be uh, a character from New Vegas, like, because there's Ramos. Mentions Ramos, and it's the Hidden Valley Bunker from Fallout New Vegas. Unexpected Windfall. Nice, coming back for you later. <laughs> Showing, okay, in Vault 111, where your character starts the game in Fallout 4, it's a cryo vault, and you can find the <clears throat> uh, cryo weapon, the cryolator in there. And you can't get it because it's behind an expert level lock. And so the character comments, nice coming back for you later. Arcane Signet. Something to love, honor, and cherish. A reminder of someone who once did that for you. Oh. It's the wedding ring. Okay. In Fallout 4, you can choose as Nate or Nora. You can rename them, obviously, but... Um, whoever you choose, your spouse dies. And you can get your wedding ring off them. Oh. Ever-flowing chalice. It's the one! The only! The Vault 13 Canteen! So, the Vault 13 Canteen became a huge meme for the New Vegas community. Because, as a pre-order bonus for ordering the game at GameStop, you got the... Uh, Vault Tech Pack, which was all the stuff from, which was basically the Lone Wanderers stuff from, uh, or no, the Vault Dwellers stuff from, uh, Fallout 1. 
an Armored Vault 13 jumpsuit, a weathered 10 mil pistol, and a Vault 13 canteen, which slowly refilled your health if you had depleted health, and also, uh, in hardcore mode, where you have to drink water and stuff, uh, kept you hydrated. Lightning Greaves, um, no matter how big the fall is, you're safe as long as you, as you land with both feet. Oh, okay, so, so this is about the uh, free fall greaves that you can find in Fallout 4 that let you just whew, mind stone. When facing a crisis, don't forget to squeeze your official Vault Tech Stress Ball over Sears Manual. So I'm guessing this is stuff that's actually from, uh, or so this is stuff that's actually from Magic the Gathering, just given a Fallout flavor. Soul Ring. The beverages. The beverages were pleased by Project Cobalt. Not only did they discover new weaponizable isotopes, but a state tasty beverage additive to, to boot. Again, more stuff about. That. Talisman of Conviction. Grognak, Silver Shroud, Man to Man, Mistress of Mystery, The Inspector, the heroes united together to become the Unstoppables. In the games, there are these comic books you can collect to give you extra perks in Fallout 4. And one of the comics is called The Unstoppables. It's a team-up comic that's supposed to be like the Avengers of in-universe comic characters. Like Grognak, who's, you know, Conan. Uh, the Silver Shroud, who's the Shadow. So it's basically, um, Defenders of the Earth. Master of Magic Spells and Illusions. Mandrink. I was so weirded out to find out that uh, Flash Gordon and uh, Ming were in that show. Also that they made Ming green, which granted is better than having, you know, yellow face like they did in the movie. Talisman of Creativity. Science fiction? Not anymore. Now these tales are science fact. And Astoundingly Awesome Tales, which is about, which I believe is a science fiction magazine in the universe. Sort of, sort of like, uh, uh. Tales to Astonish, which is where Ant-Man was created. Talisman of Progress. Which is their... They have a... There's a uh, uh, popular mechanics parody in game. More sensation than science, these medical magazines only encourage malpractice. <laughs> oh, this must be the DC Journal of Medicine. Thought Vessel. A window into the mind of someone you once knew. Oh, it's Sean's terminal. So, um, spoilers for Fallout 4. Y you were frozen at the start of the Great War. You were thought out 60 years prior, and your infant son is stolen from you when your wife is killed. You were refrozen, and then thought out again 60 years later, and, um, yeah. So, 60 year time gap, your son is now an old man. And he leads the Institute, the bad guys of the game. I mean, they're not, okay, so they're not as bad as other villains. Like, they're not as bad as the Enclave. They're not as bad as Caesar's Legion. That is actually kind of debatable because they do enslave people. But they're, like, clones with cybernetic enhancement. So, there's, like, this weird, like, you know, is an artificial, does an artificial person deserve the same rights as the person? The obvious answer is yes, but, like, there's more argument to be had than there is with Caesar's Legion, where it's like, no, you were kidnapping innocent people. It's like, you know, like, the Institute is basically taking the idea of breeding livestock to also include having humans as livestock, which is messed up and wrong in all kinds of ways. Automated assembly line, you needn't be afraid of me, it's my Securitrons that are going to kill you, Mr. House. Mr. House, of course, voiced by René Aubergenois, uh, Odo from Deep Space Nine, uh, and a bunch of other characters who I love. Let's see, Brotherhood Scribe, doing some cool tech work in the middle of a firefight. Over-encumbered, oh boy, that ain't me. That's why they invented the Long Haul Perk. The Long Haul Perk is a perk in New Vegas, which allows you to fast travel while over encumbered. Fast travel is where you can... It's basically teleport, but time moves while you teleport. The Pridwin Steel Flagship. 
a giant air balloon that the that the Brotherhood of Steel used to get around. Sentry bot, mechanical a mechanical menace of the worst kind. This thing will destroy you, and it, even if you manage to kill it, it will explode and then kill you. Then, Vault Thirteen Dwellers Journey. As this saga enters, and after you draw a step at a lore counter. Interesting. I don't know what anything about this. So it tells the story of the Vault Dweller, including like a little image of the ma of the master in there. Remember what I was talking about? Like a human blob fused to a computer? There he is. Oh! Oh, it's my, it's my darling! My sweet, cutie, em emergent intelligence. Okay, so Curie. She is, uh, her, her name is an acronym, but she is also named after Mary Curie. Uh, the, the, the famous science, lady scientist. She, she, uh, develops cures for diseases. She wants to, she, she becomes a companion, but feels that her creativity is limited because she is a robot. So, she transplants her mind into one of the synths that we're taught, we talked about earlier. They're clones of you. And she becomes a companion. Well, clones of your grandson, I should say. Clones of your son. Blech. And, oh, she's, like... She has a delightful French accent. I love her so much. James Wandering Dad! Ladies and gentlemen, we have Liam Neeson! So long as we've got each other, that's all that matters. Aww. Okay, so Fallout 3. Uh, in Fallout 4, you're chasing your son. In Fallout 3, you're chasing your dad. See, it's different. Because <laughs> it's a... It's, it's the... Because you're either the pattern familius or you're following the pattern familius. James is an altruist. Uh, he has a fumble in morality because his wife dies giving birth to you. So he's like, I need to protect my son at all costs. Or, well, child at all costs. You can be a boy or a girl. So he takes you to Vault 101, which is about to reseal again because it's a xenophobic vault. And then, uh, uh, but, um, and then he goes back out to redo, to, to remake Project Purity, which is his whole, which is his and his uh, dead wife's child, basically, child other than you, basically, because, it's like, we want to give clean water to everyone. And they built it in the Jefferson Memorial for some reason. Is the Jefferson Memorial even near the Potomac in real life? I don't know. Um, and he dies to the Enclave, who are, again, the fascists. The, the, the fascist evil government run by John Henry Eaton. I hope we get his card. And then we have my boy... Nick Valentine! He is a Gen 2 synth. They're mo they have the intelligence of Gen 3 synths, but are trapped in Gen 1 synth bodies. Um, Nick is... Your case is my top concern. So Nick is a synth... He So Nick is a synth detective, or as our, bo as our character sometimes calls him, Clockwork Dick, which is a much better... Nickname, let's be honest, Nick. Um, and, uh, he's, he's got, like, he's this, he's this, like, just hard-bitten noir detective because he's actually, uh, he's actually has the memories of a pre-war detective grafted into his brain. And so he, uh, and so, like, you help him solve the, a final case of his. Of his past life. And it's there's a lot of interesting ideas where Nick recognizes that he is a different person from the Nick Valentine who existed in the pre-war era. But he also recognizes that he is that he is kind of... He is still partly Nick. Anyway. Next up we have Synth Infiltrator. Which is just a cool, like, kind of cyberpunky lady. Uh, so Gen 3 synths are often used to infiltrate human settlements in Fallout 4. Um, the only way you can tell them apart from normal humans is they have something called a synth component, which is a little chip that attaches to their brain so that the synth can control them. And allegedly removing the chip kills them. A Sultron Dominator. A Sultron's one of, basically the, uh, the, the assassin version of the... Securitron, or the, uh, the, the, whatever you call them, Sentrybot. 
instead of a big bulky with a missile launcher and a Gatling gun, they have sword hands and an eye beam that will mess you up. They are no joke. They will kill you. The Motherload Excavator. I have no idea what this is, but it looks cool. The Plasma Caster. So originally this was the design of the plasma rifle in Fallout 1 and 2. However, after the after Fallout after Fallout 3 re reimagined the plasma rifle, uh, it, the original plasma rifle was rebranded as the plasma caster. It looks cool. It's really badass. It's got like that nice little trident design. Synth eradicator. One of the Gen 1 synths. Uh, these these guys are a little higher tech, but still pretty basic. Like again, when you're when the Gen Three synths are literal humans that just happen to have some cybernetics implanted in them, you're you know being hydraulic and wires kind of makes you a little outdated. Arcade Ganon, oh my boy, my boy, oh so good. Okay, Arcade is played by. Not Eugene Levy. Um, come. He plays Flynn Rider. He plays Shazam. Oh, uh, what is his name? Zachary Levi. He is one of the companions from New Vegas. His dad was an Enclave soldier. Um, basically, he's like, look, the Enclave sucked, but I knew some good people in it. Give us a chance to help. And so you round up his dad's old crew, and you can get them to help at Hoover Dam. And if you're intelligent, you get them to help the NCR. And then you can either convince Arcade to let go of the past, or to embrace the fact that he's a uh, son of the Enclave. Electro Siphon. I calculate your chance of success to be, well, I don't want to be morbid. I don't know what that, I don't know where that's from, but it's funny. It's cool, too. Like, that's a robo-brain. Ro Robo-brains have psychic powers, which is weird. I don't know. Red Death Shipwrecker. That little fella is deadly in his own fashion, the Mariner. So, um, the Red Death is a quest you can pick up in Fallout 4's DLC, Far Harbor. In Far Harbor, he, in Far Harbor, uh, this character says that she lost family to this creature, so you help her track him down. Turns out to be just a tiny little dude, but he's got glowing red eyes, and that's what led ships to wreck across the rocks. So you kill it because it's got blinking red eyes. Rex the Cyberhound! Oh, Rex, my boy! Rex is one of the best companions in Fallout New Vegas. Uh, he is a cyber dog. Um, he's basically immortal. I've talked about him in my card game one, or when I talked about the plague cards. Uh, he, here he is at the king's, at the king's, uh, hideout, at the king's area. You can see the jukebox behind him. Sentinel Sarah Lyons! Daughter of, daughter of Elder Lyons. Future leader of the, of the lion, of the, of the Brother to Steel. Um, she is a big hero, a big fan, a big, like, ally of yours in in uh, Fallout 3. Sean, father of synths. Speak of the devil. It's your child. He's old now. Look at that. It's such a great image, too. Uh, I can't get it to focus, but you see them building a synth in the background. You see him, like, almost with this... In the game, he presents himself as a very, like, elderly, you know, kind man. He kind of has a Joe Biden vibe to himself. But this is kind of more how he actually is, where he is this, like, calculative mastermind. Like, because he presents himself to you in this way because he's like, look, I want, my, I want my parent to take over for me when I die, but I need to convince them of our plight first. <laughs> Vault 112, Sadistic Simulation. Uh, Dr. Braun named after Werner von Braun, who was a Nazi, uh, he created the Gek, the Garden of Eden creation kit, a terraforming device. He was, er, as a reward for his efforts, he was given his own vault, which was a simulation vault. Everyone was strapped into a matrix chair and put in a simulation. 
And Braun, being a sadistic piece of shit, uh, tortured everyone for 200 years until you come along and bring the Chinese. Because there's a kill code that will free everyone by killing them. And it does it by turning it into a war simulation, which brings Chinese soldiers. Anyway, Brotherhood Vertibird. Because the Brotherhood uses helicopters. T-45D power armor. Oh, wait, was there... As tough as the armored troops it carries. Eh, eh. I don't know about that. Oh, here, let me see if Vault 112 had flavor text, too. As the saga enters... No, no, no. Nope. T-45 power armor. Pretty cool looking, but nothing here. Ferris Lake. Even before it was a super mutant camp, the water treatment plant was used for all sorts of questionable experiments. I'm assuming that's something from Fallout 76. Helios 1! A solar plant from New Vegas. Um, you can get a... Or if you get the e Euclid Sea Finder, you can turn it into a once-a-day super weapon by powering it up using the solar plant. This plant is still capable of activating the devastating Archimedes satellite weapon. Heck yeah, and you can see it blasting NCR troops. If you do that with Arcade in your party, he says like, You activated Archimedes? You're gonna kill those soldiers! And if you are a low intelligence build, you can like, play it off like, I didn't know. And he's like, and he literally just says, You moron! Like, get it just screamed at by Zachary Levi. It's like, shut up, Flynn Rider, you don't know what you're talking about. Austere command. Oh, this sounds. Oh, these these bobbleheads are melting. No, my collector's items. Open the vaults. It may be time to leave, but I'll never forget the day you entered Vault Seventy Six, the Overseer. Uh, I believe the Overseer of Vault Seventy Six is voiced by either Dana Delaney or oh, who voiced or Adrian Barbeau. One of those two. One of one of. Uh, Bruce Wayne's girlfriends from Batman the Animated Series. <laughs> Mechanized production. At the onset of the Great War, Nicola's best minds were resigned, reassigned to weapons development. And it's just a bunch of mole rats, uh, or naked mole rats on, or on crates of Nicola. One with the machine. Synthkind welcomes you as long as you welcome us. This is Dima, this is Nick's brother. Whereas Nick was designed using the memories of a pre-war detective, Dima was given his own memories, his own brain. Wake the past. Everyone thought Rob Coe's Assaultron Reserves were decimating the Great War. In reality, they were merely dormant. ruh -ro. Mystic Forge. Which I'm guessing is another one of those, like, cards that was given a new flavor because of the thing. Let's see. Panharmonicon. The difference between surviving and living is joy. I don't know if that's something from Fallout 76. It looks like it's just a funky harmonica. Solemn Simulacrum. Which is just like... Oh, that's Ada! She's a DLC follower. She's one of the few followers who doesn't have any... Who doesn't have any... Who doesn't, like, take any umbrage to no matter what choice you make. Steel Overseer. Welcome! Administrative targeting parameters have been erased and set to admin user group token dot name equals faction. That's funny. That's some good flavor text. Clifftop Retreat. From up here, you can almost imagine how it was before. Wasteland Survivor. That's cute. I think we're getting a Fall 76 cards here. Exotic Orchard. Orwell Orchards is about as peaceful as and pleasant as a tomb can get. I need to set these down. Hold on, let me... Eh. Meh. Ugh. Well, it's just a nice little farmstead. It's interesting how the land cards in this all seem to come from uh, Fallout 76. Glacial Fortress. Considered the greatest battle in history, Operation Anchorage showcased the effectiveness of the winter fought, winter, winterized T-51B power armor. Which is from Operation Anchorage, obviously. Which is a DLC of Fallout 3. Uh, it's a war. It's a war simulation, but it gives you a ton of really cool stuff. Uh, irrigated farmland. Sure, there are prettier farms in the Commonwealth, but none of them know how to grow tar berries like we do. Wise man. 
I believe this is a reference to the, the slog, which is a pool that uses fecal matter to um, fertilize. Prairie stream. Uh, hunting minor lurks, selling their eggs. It's not much, but it's honest work for a raider. Sky cloud expanse. This looks like the Boston airport. The Ritter of Steel turned the airport into a mighty stronghold that staged both the Pridwin and Liberty Prime. I don't know how accurate the Fallout 4 at Boston Airport is to the actual Boston Airport. The Spire of Industry. Atop the tallest power, tower in the Commonwealth resides Fist, the leader of the Super Mutants, and his prized prisoners, Str Strong and Rex. St uh, it's not Rex from Fallout New Vegas, it's Rex, the, the radio host. Sulphur Falls. Shortly after the vault dwellers moved out, fire geckos moved in. It's a really nice image. That's from New Vegas. Uh, one of the vaults has a big sulfur deposit under it, and you can blow the place sky high. Temple of Enlightenment. Once a symbol of national pride, now used only for target practice. I believe that's Bunker Hill. Temple of Epiphany. The Institute's FEV experiments failed. Only Sean's DNA made organic sense possible. Okay. Treasure Vault. The vault of the Sierra Madre Hotel and Casino contains a fortune gold and a tragic tale. I love gold! The touch of it, the taste of it, the smell of it! Uh, I, I usually make it out with all 37 bars. And the way I do that... Okay, so you're not supposed to be able to take the gold with you. It's it's literally there to taunt you. But there are plenty of ways to, to get it out if you're smart. The way I do it is really dumb. Uh, I pick up all the gold, which over encumbers me so I can barely walk. I'm like, meh, 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 meh. So what I do is I load the stairs with his mines so that when the boss of the area comes through to kill me, he activates the mines, kills himself, and catapults me through the force field toward the end, toward the entrance, so that I can get out tax free. Wayfarer's bobble. What better way to spend some fun quality time than collecting some snow globes? Snow globes in New Vegas are you are a collectible that you can sell for money to Robert House. It is a reference to the character in. Uh, it's a reference to Herman Cain. Or is that his name? Citizen Kane, because he drops a snow globe while saying... And, well, okay, technically that house house is based on Howard Hughes, whereas, Kane, whereas Charles Foster Kane is based on uh, William Randolph Hirsch, but tomato, tomato. They're both, they're, they're both assholes. Ash Barons. War has survivors, but rarely has winners. Oh, that is actually really... Dark and taunting. Buried ruins. Venture into the abandoned subway and you'll get more than your ticket punched. Okay, so in Fallout 3, the main way of traversing the DC Metro is through the tunnels. Command Tower! New Vegas is more than a city. It's the remedy to mankind's derailment. Mr. House. The Lucky 38! Ah! Oh, in all her glory... There, oh my god, there's so much stuff here. When is it going to get past the islands? Or the lands? Whoa. Okay. Let me see. Is there anything here I actually want to do for you? Um, no, no, really. okay. So, for some reason, I'm get, I got this, like, weird collector card of Madison Lee, but, like, I thought I already had that, didn't I? Yeah, I got two of the same card, but this one's, like, made of a firmer card stock. Versus, like, hear me. See? Like, very, very different cardstock. And then energy. Human Knight, Human Knight, Thopter, 
copy, treasure, food, robot, learn to play magic on your turn. Okay, whatever. So this, I think, is supposed to be, like, the, 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 like, the collector's thing that you get. Okay, now that we finally got all those settled, let's put you guys in the deck holder. And let's break out this. I'm expecting a lot of stupid cards. Please, please give me John Henry Eaton. I need my boy. I need my, I need Malcolm McDowell robot. I got a golden ticket. I got a golden chance to make my way. McCready, oh my god! It's my boy. It's my precious little little swearing boy. Okay. So, RJ McCready, Lamplight Mayor. This is this is McCready when he is a child. He is a he leads the kids of Lamplight Caverns. It's basically like just a settlement of children. It's a lot of fun and um he he cusses like a sailor and it's adorable. I, I love him to death. I hate I hate how they turn him into just like a sad dude in Fallout 4, though, because that takes place when he's an adult. Anyway, that was a lot of fun. I wish there were some more character cards, but overall, I'm very happy with what I got. Between Arcade Ganon and Madison Lee and all these other characters who I love so much, it was a lot of fun doing this unboxing. I hope you all enjoyed it too. This is Royce Miller. I'm Audi.